Hey class, the last lesson for unit four is gonna be synthetic division and the factor theorem. So sometimes synthetic, or <clears throat> since synthetic substitution gives us the coefficients of the quotient, it's sometimes called synthetic division. It can be used to divide a polynomial expression of the form x minus k. All right, I'll show you what I mean by that. So I can divide x cubed minus x squared minus 2x plus 8 by x minus 1 if I think of it like this. So if x minus 1 is my factor, then that means that x equals 1 should be a solution. So I can divide 1 into this. So I'm going to synthetically divide. So I'm going to put the 1 out front. And then remember, you list your coefficients in order. So 1, negative 1, negative 2, and 8. So 1, negative 1, negative 2, and 8. And then I'm going to divide it, synthetically divide. So I drop down the first one. And then remember, it's drop mama. So drop it down, then multiply, add, multiply, add. So 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. Negative 2 time plus 0 is negative 2. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 8 times negative 2 is 6. And then, since this was an x cubed up here, that means if I divided it by an x, my answer is now an x squared. And it goes in order, so this is x squared, and then x, this is my constant, and then this would be my remainder. So how I would write my answer would be 1x squared, there's zero x's, minus two, and then it's a positive six, so I'd have a plus six over x minus one. So the remainder goes over the divisor, what you divided by. And then that would be it, the answer. So let's try this one. If x minus 7 is what I'm dividing by, that means that I'm going to divide by, or that x equals 7 as the solution. So put 7 out front, and then I'm going to divide synthetic division. 2, negative 9, negative 32, negative 21. Drop down the first one, multiply, so 7 times 2 is 14, add negative 9 plus 14 is 5, 7 times 5 is 35, negative 32 plus 35 is 3, 7 times 3 is 21. Negative 21 plus 21 is 0. So if there is no remainder, so if the answer here when you plug it in is 0, that means that x equals 7 was a factor or x minus 7 was a factor because it divided into the polynomial evenly. Just like when you divide a whole number by, like 24 divided by 3 is 8. There's no remainder. That means 3 was a factor of 24. You can write three, 24 as 3 times 8. And so this was a cubic polynomial that we divided by an x. And so our answer is going to be 1 degree lower, an x squared. And then this will be the coefficient for x. And then the 3 will be our constant. So the answer is 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. There is no remainder this time. If there was a remainder, we would put the remainder over the x minus 7 again. But there is no remainder, which essentially means that x minus 7 times the 2x squared plus 5x plus 3, if you multiply this back out, x minus 7 times our answer, it would equal this polynomial here.
And then that brings us to our factor theorem. So the factor theorem says that if in fact the remainder is zero, then it is a factor of the polynomial, which is kind of exactly what I just said. But if that's the case, then we can you continue to use that idea to finish solving. So I'm going to just skip down to example four now. So I'm saying that x solve this polynomial with synthetic division. So if f of x equals 3x cubed plus 13x squared plus 2x minus 8, given that x equals negative 4 is one of the roots. So it's a cubed function. So that means that there's two solutions. I'm telling you negative 4 is one of the answers, which means that x minus 4 is one of the factors. So, or x plus 4, I'm sorry. x plus 4 must have been a factor for x equals negative 4. So I'm going to plug in negative 4 into synthetic division. So take the coefficients, 3, 13, 2, and negative 8. Drop down the first one, multiply. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Add, 13 plus negative 12 is 1. Multiply, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Add, 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 4 and negative 2 is 8. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0. So I got a remainder of 0, which means it is, in fact, a solution. It is a root. So it was cubic, so we go 1 degree lower. So this would be quadratic, 3x squared plus 1x minus 2. And then if I want to solve for the other two solutions, I could set it equal to 0. And then I can solve either using the quadratic formula or it might solve by factoring. Um, if I took 3 times negative 2, it would be negative 6. And it has to add up to 1 in the middle. And I do think that you can do that because you could do 3 times negative 2 makes negative 6 and 3 plus negative 2 is 1. And so this does factor further, and I'm going to use the box to do that. So 3x squared and then negative 2. And then I multiply the 3 and the negative 2 together to get negative 6, and they had to add up to 1 in the middle, which was positive 3 and negative 2. So 3x and negative 2x. And then 3x and x squared have a 3x in common. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 1 is 3x. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. So this factors to x plus 1 and 3x minus 2. And then our other factor was the x plus 4, if we want to go all the way back to the original. So we already had our one answer, x equals negative 4. And then x plus 1 is a factor, x would equal negative 1. And then if 3x minus 2 is a factor, set that equal to 0. And add 2. Divide by 3, get x equals 2 thirds. So x equals 2 thirds would be our third answer for this problem. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to do that again. So x equals 5 is a solution implies that x minus 5 was a factor. So if I plug 5 in, synthetically divide the coefficients, 1. This one is missing the x squared term. So remember in synthetic substitution, you have to have all of the coefficients. So I have to add in a 0 here, then negative 19, and then negative 30. So drop down the 1. 1 times 5 is 5. 0 plus 5 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Negative 19 plus 25 is 6. 5 times 6 is 30. Negative 30 plus 30 is 0. So I went again from cubic. So this will be quadratic. So 1x squared plus 5x plus 6. 
and then setting that equal to zero, we can solve that. It is an x squared multiplies to six, adds up to five. So it's gonna be two times three. So it'll be x plus two times x plus three. So taking that and solving, if x plus two equals zero, we get x equals negative two. x plus three equals zero, x equals negative three. And then our third answer was x equals five. And that was given, plus when I plugged it in, I got a remainder of zero, which means it is a factor and it is a solution. I think I'm gonna skip example six and just do one more example. So same idea, solve the polynomial function. This time I'm looking for four answers because it's next to the fourth power, given that one answer is x equals one. If x equals one, then x minus one had to have been a factor. So plugging in one to synthetic division. So we have one here and then I do not have any x cubed, so I have to add a zero there. And then I have a negative five for x squared. I have zero x's and then a four. So you do have to have a placeholder for every spot to the highest exponent all the way down to the constant. Then drop down the first term, multiply these two. So one times one is one. Then add zero plus one is one. 1 times 1 is 1, negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4, 0 plus negative 4 is negative 4. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4, 4 plus negative 4 is 0. This time, since it started as a quartic, this is going to be a cubic now. So this is going to be 1x cubed. It just goes 1 degree lower when you divide because you're dividing by an x. So you took out from an x to the fourth, now it's an x cubed. Plus one x squared minus four x minus four. If I wanna solve this now, since it's four terms, you're going to have to use factor by grouping. So group the first two and group the last two. In the first group, you can take out an x squared and you're left with an x plus one which means in the next group you have to take out a negative four and then you're left with an x plus one. And then in each of these terms, we have one term, two terms, they both have an x plus one in common, so we can take out the x plus one and then we're left with an x squared minus four. And technically you could set each of those equal to zero and solve for x now because you're down to quadratic or you continue factoring and x squared minus four factors to x plus two and x minus two because it's difference of perfect squares. Then set each of those factors equal to zero. So x plus one equals zero, x plus two equals zero, and x minus two equals zero. So x equals negative one, x equals negative two, x equals two. And then our fourth answer was x equals positive one. So that was right here. So in factored form, to get back to the very original one, it would be all of these and then times another x minus one. The, if you were to multiply these four terms out, you would get back to our original x to the fourth minus five x squared plus four. So. I gave you one answer and then you factored it down to get the other three answers. X to the fourth, so there was four roots. Okay, that's all I got.